Most American freight trains usually have the same power leading every long distance freight run for the past two decades, the General Electric Wide Cab. Although the standard design has numerous variants based on their engines and other parts, their appearance is almost identical since the early 1990s. Their reliability has made them the ideal road locomotive of all Class 1s in North America. It can be relatively hard to distinguish other than their radiator fans, or of course, their paint schemes. While spotting these identical locomotives can be relatively unexciting, two of these GE wide caps stand out from a range of thousands based on their unique one-off paint schemes, which gives rail fans something interesting to look out for in the sea of standard locomotives. Although the 9 and the Dash 9 series name represents the 1990s, the real story of these two engines and others like them dates all the way back to 1976 with the introduction of the C30-7 built by the same manufacturer. Not only did this locomotive introduce the Dash series, which represents what decade the class was built, but it also debuted the successful GE 7FDL-8 Prime Mover, an engine that will be used on later GE models including the Dash 8 and Dash 9. Of course, there were various improvements of the Dash 9 series when compared to other GE classes that followed the C30-7, other than the wide cab and boxy radiator fans. In the case of this episode, the C44-9W had 6 axles as denoted by the C, 4400 horsepower as denoted by the 44, the Dash 9 standing for the 1990s, and the W stood for wide cab, as this series was equipped with split cooling, high-ad or high adhesive trucks, two blowers, an electric fuel injunction, with the last of these upgrades being key for new environmental regulations for locomotives. Additionally, the use of microprocessors and new computers only added to the operational efficiency and low cost of the new engines from GE, as this locomotive model instantly became a bestseller among all Class 1s, with a whopping 3,668 units being built during their 11 years of production, thus being the second most numerous class of GE locomotives ever produced, second only to its successor, the Evolution Series, or GEVO. Almost half of these Dash 9s would be purchased by the newly established Burlington Northern Santa Fe, or BNSF, with their first batch being painted in the somewhat short-lived Heritage 1, or H1, paint scheme, and were numbered 960 to 1123, with the locomotives to be focused on being built towards the beginning and end of the order, with 965 built in August 1996, and 1063 built in November of the same year. Once in service, 965 and 1063 along with the other 1600 Dash 9s on the BNSF roster, Roam throughout the entire system as they are the primary road engines pulling intermodals and mixed freights alike, from the wooded mountains of the ex Burlington Northern to the dry plains of the ex Santa Fe, as well as the occasional visit off of BNSF trackages for foreign power. Of course, no one locomotive has a perfect operational history, and sometimes parts have to be replaced. 965 and 1063 were no exception to this, as the left generator of 965 was replaced by an ex Santa Fe unit in 2005 thus wearing both the H1 and Santa Fe Warbonnet livery, while 1063's counterpart was replaced with a plain yellow generator, possibly being from an older Dash 9. However, most locomotives start to wear out over time, with the average lifespan of a GE engine usually being between 20 and 30 years. Once they started to show their age, most BNSF Dash 9s were either repainted into the H3 livery, or were sidelined in massive storage lines, but 965 and 1063 didn't gain either of these fates. Instead, 965 was sent to the BNSF Topeka shops in 2015, while 1063 was sent to the same place to be repaired after damage on the right side of its nose from the Roswell accident of the same year. Eventually, they emerged with a one-of-a-kind hybrid livery, in which the engines received the modern BNSF logo on its front associated with the H3 livery, but the rest of the engine still remained in its H1 paint, with 965 having a green band and a solid yellow line wrapping around the front and just under the BNSF lettering, instead of sloping down, while 1063 gained the black and yellow band just above its headlight with the bottom line sloping down. One can also argue that the position of the top band and solid green bottom line is an incorporation of the H4 paint scheme, a variant of the H3 which is only assigned to local and yard engines. This creative repaint thus created a custom paint scheme with features unique only to these engines, and technically not combined with any RBNSF paint scheme. But even this wouldn't be the last paint scheme combination for either of these engines, as 1063 would once again swap its generator, this time to a solid silver generator, as well as a silver generator on its right side, while 965 would receive smaller right side generators in H3 paint. Nowadays, these two uniquely painted engines can still be found throughout the American Rail Network, albeit trailing instead of leading, 
likely due to lack of PTC, as these two exceptions in standard BNSF paint schemes go down in history for their brilliant combinations of liveries. Thank you all for watching this episode of Remarkable Engines. The story of these two engines are noteworthy as they avoided storage and retirement in style by showcasing creative combinations of the various liveries of BNSF. Technically, a third engine was considered for this episode, specifically Dash 9 number 1113, since its notes received Santa Fe style black lettering, but this engine didn't have too much of a variation of its new paint scheme when compared to its former livery, even though it had an H2 front door at one point. But in addition to 1113, these few Dash 9s represent how a simple change of parts and mixing of liveries can provide great opportunities in rail fitting as exceptions to the norm of railroading. Thank you again for watching. Credit for all the photos used go to their respective photographers, and if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more. Have a good day.